let's talk about Minnesota and the T-Wolves. They're hoping that Andrew Wiggins one day may get the Mamba mentality, but Wiggins is entering his sixth season in the league, and while he has played well, many feel there's still a lot of room for improvement in this game, and that includes Wolves president Gerson Rosas, who said this about Wiggins. Quote, in order for us to have the success we want to have, Wiggins has got to be a main contributor. To be fair to him, he needs some continuity in terms of coaching, philosophy, strategy, and style of play. And we feel he's going to be one of the bigger beneficiaries of this style of play. Royce, do you trust Wiggins to step up for the Wolves this season? Well, the Wolves obviously consider him a franchise player because they're paying him like he's one. And that, that's what's kind of that's what's covered this whole conversation around Andrew Wiggins, and it changed once he got the contract that he got, mm. is people started perceiving him in a different way. Is that is he playing up to the dollar amount that he's making? And, and to be perfectly honest, he's been a disappointing player. He's too inconsistent. One night he will look like that guy, and then two nights he won't. And if the Wolves are going to begin to take the steps forward as a franchise around these young players that they have, Andrew Wiggins has got to be part of it. And, and so, look, there, there can be some optimism there in terms of your infrastructure, bringing back Ryan Saunders and trying to build out that way. But Andrew Wiggins has got to do it on the floor first and, and prove it on a consistent basis. He will be defined by his max salary. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of where we are right now. And he's owed $122 million over the next four years. He's had four head coaches in five years. He's still only 24 years old. But the reality is he's an enigma. He can give you 19 points one night or 20 points and he can give you 10 the, the next night. And you're right. I mean, that contract is not really movable right now and they yeah. are going to need him. Uh, and I always say the litmus test is if you are a team that had cap space, would you go out and sign Andrew Wiggins for four years, $122 million? And I think the answer is, is a resounding no right now. Yeah, there's always that, there's a question around him of the want to. Um, and that is such a hard thing to control because like, like you said, we see glimpses of talent. Actually, Phil Mackey asked an interesting question to Rosas. He says, is Wiggins unlockable? Uh, Rosas' response was, we need him to be unlockable. But if you don't have the key, you know, how, how, how much can can you put in well how much stock can you put in a guy it, like it that? certainly feels like there's a great player there somewhere right and a great two-way player because that's kind that's of why we keep the asking potential. these qu this question and you can about see it, but there's so many players that have this yeah. and then they get to age 28 29 30 31 and it never happened but well, he is 24. Well, and Royce you've seen him against Oklahoma City right uh, he's played his best basketball against the Thunder last against year against the Thunder for 82 games the guy would be all NBA <laughs> yeah. he's unbelievable that's against true. Oklahoma City <laughs> But look, he's 24 years old, and this should be the peak of his career. So we, we will see now that it's a little bit stable with Ryan Saunders there. Um, you know, we'll see if he can produce. Now, while the T-Wolves are working towards another playoff appearance, the Thunder, they're in rebuild mode. And a piece they hope to build around is Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who was one of the main pieces in the Chris Paul trade with the Oklahoma City Thunder. The second-year player, though, says he's not feeling any pressure to fill in for Russell Westbrook. Here's what he said about joining OKC. Quote, I'm not Russell Westbrook. We don't have the same name, the same body type, nothing like that. So I'm going to try to be myself and be the best me and everything else will just take care of itself. Bobby, given the expectations uh, that have shifted with OKC trading away basically two all NBA players, what's successful season for the Thunder? Well, the successful season is building off of what an all you know rookie year. He's he's only 21 years old. He averaged you know 10, 5, and 5 in, in um, LA last year. I think he's got a valuable mentor in Chris Paul as long as uh, we don't know how long Chris Paul is going to be there. And here's a player that was close to untouchable in Los Angeles. And they did not want to put him in that Paul George trade. That was kind of the last piece to be added there. But the reality is this is going to be a lottery team. So it's got to be as far as do not fall into the, We always see young players fall into bad habits when they go to teams that win 25 and 30 games. And I think he's got to kind of continue those habits that he had in, in Los Angeles with uh, when he played under Doc Rivers. I think it's really smart for him to temper expectations and make sure that the fan base understands I'm not that guy. And I know that you know it's kind of easy to laugh about saying I'm not Russell Westbrook. We don't have the same name, which is obvious. We understand that. But for, for people that have shown up to that arena and watched Russell Westbrook for a decade mm -hmm. and the style of play that he brings and the excitement and the energy and the emotion, the tenacity, all those things, Shea Gildas Alexander in basically every sense of the word is a different player. He plays differently, he has a different demeanor, a different skill set. And for him to kind of try to distance himself and say, let me be my own guy, let me develop at my own pace, I think that's, that shows a sign of maturity from him to kind of understand that it's smart to distance himself 
from Russell Westbrook. Right, and draft picks are hard to chew on, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, you're in OKC. What is the talk around fans about what they expect out of this season you know I think that there's there's some cautious optimism especially with the front office and the coaching staff they feel like they could be in that playoff conversation and it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around that having them having uh, the fact that they traded away two all NBA guys but Chris Paul Danilo Gallinari Steven Adams Shea Gilgis Alexander Terrence Ferguson had quietly a pretty good year last year Dennis Schroeder there's a core of a pretty good team there they feel like they could be in that 35 to 40 win range the question is and Bobby would know uh, better about how they, the Thunder might approach this but do they want to be that good like, if, if they get to the trade deadline and you've got Danilo Gallinari, who's a, an expiring contract, and you're on the fringes of the playoff conversation, do you want to remain that good? I think that the, what, you, what you do is you use a 25 to 30 game sample the first years. You get to January 1. You, we could say this about a lot of teams, maybe even like a, a team like Toronto, and then see where you are. Mm -hmm. If you're in the hunt in that 6 to 8 range, you stay, you stay put. Um, even with the Gallinari expiring contract, but it all comes down to Chris Paul, right? right? How long is he going to be there? What are the options there? None right now. I mean, really, the only option is Miami down the road, and, and if you're the Heat, that basically takes you out of two, the 2021 free agent class when they get another crack of uh, getting a player to, uh, next to Jimmy Butler. So I think, I think Chris Paul is going to be there for the, for the season, and, it's, and you are still going to be a competitive team, but – you don't want to be one of those teams that are going to be picking 12, mm -hmm. 13, 14. Or maybe maybe now with the lottery changes, yeah. maybe you do. No, it may not matter. As much as Shea is tempering expectations, he's not Russell Westbrook. I think that fans in OKC should also temper their expectations <laughs> that they're not going to be a playoff team in the West. But look, stranger things have yeah. happened. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, Check out ESPN+. Plus.